hurt me. Don't hurt me. No more. What's up, guys? And welcome back to another episode of Channel Chasers. Uh, sorry we're, uh, we went on a little bit of a hiatus. Uh, summer's been a little busy for me. But, of course, uh, as always, I am your host, Jay from Mr. Jay's Reviews. And joining me, as always, is my friend, my co-host, my self-proclaimed sidekick, Brian Kersey. How you doing tonight, Brian? Hello, people. So, this week we will be talking about uh, a show that I've been looking forward to for a while. Brian has been looking forward to it as well. It is the TV sequel to um, a, honestly, uh, instant classic for me, uh, teen coming-of-age movie from, I want to it was last year, right? Yeah, it was last year. I believe so. Or, or, or was it two years ago? I don't know. But anyway, um, we are going to be about Love, Victor, the Hulu original series, um, which, fun fact, was originally planned for Disney+, Plus, but then Disney wanted to uh, go a little... Uh, wouldn't let them go as far as they wanted to go. Um, and so they respectfully um, moved networks uh, to... But still within a Disney family, because the Disney umbrella is kind of so massive, it's terrifying. Yeah, and um, uh, it was 2018, by the way. Okay, so two years ago. Okay, cool. So yeah, um, we're talking about Love, Victor. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, honestly, again, this is a show that we've both been looking forward to. Um, and of course, it's Pride Month, so I feel like this is you know more than appropriate. Uh, so... I definitely uh, been looking forward to talking about it since I finished it a couple weeks ago. Um, but uh, let's go ahead and start off uh, with kind of first impressions. Well, so first, starting off with you, Brian, have you, uh, have you actually seen Love Simon, or uh, are you just jumping in from Love Victor? Actually, uh, believe it or not, I have. Um, but nice. It was just a few days ago. Oh. oh, well, I mean, still, it works. I saw it the day before I started watching Love, Victor. Because I was like, I want to, I feel like I wanted to know what was going on. Because, yeah, yeah, because you'll get the full context. I mean, it's not, um, so just to let you guys know, if you're just kind of watching this, uh, like listening to this blind and you haven't seen the movie, it's not absolutely necessary but it definitely gives you a bit more of attachment to simon who is uh mostly a disembodied voice through like 90 percent of this first season Mm -hmm. so like i think it is important to see the movie but it's not entirely necessary all right so that's good good okay so brian uh since you're fresh on both accounts uh, what did you think of the movie and uh, your first impressions uh, when you were going into the show? Um, first of all, I knew the movie was good. I, I've heard about like what people were saying. I just never really got around to it. Uh, but uh, then I watched it and I really liked it. Um, mm-hmm. And then... And then I, I knew the show. I was gonna like the show going into it. It's young adult. It's I tend to like things that are young adult. And uh, if you guys know this show, you know that uh, we openly have a affinity for like young adult and like queer related things. Despite neither of us being queer personally, which you know you don't have to be. No, but. You know, it's just kind. Of, it's just kind of an interesting thing, right? Yeah. Like, not, not neither of us have like personal experiences with any of these, uh, like any of these subject matters, like directly. But you know, we we, we tend to be kind of drawn to it. Yeah, and uh, I watched Love Victor, and I instantly really liked it. Uh, I watched it in two days, by the way. Nice. Uh, I, I watched it in uh, one sitting uh, at uh, 
during a uh, graduation party because basically how graduation parties usually work at my house is especially if they're directly at my house it's me and my cousins sit in my room eating food and we decide what to watch and uh yeah my younger cousin clarissa um happens to be there and uh we watch a lot of the same stuff she likes legacies and you know all the other shows that i watch and I was like, hey, Love, Victor came out. You want to watch it with me? And she's like, all right, bet. And so, like, we all literally sat there and watched the entire season of Love, Victor. Because these parties last, like, at least 10 hours, 10 to 12 hours. So and you saw the whole thing. The only reason why I didn't was because uh, it was after I had been working. I had a full day at work. And uh, I was tired. So, I no, that's cool. I didn't okay, watch so, all of it, but, so then yeah. I finished, but then I finished it, actually, uh, today. Nice. And uh, I really liked it. It kind of went in a couple predictable uh, routes, but also some that weren't so much. Yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm I'm not going to lie. Me and my cousin were talking about that and like, you know, we we thought it was going to kind of be like your standard coming of age story type show, but it it got a little spicy in some parts. Uh, you know, it would uh, but none of the spiciness involved the actual teenage characters. But we'll talk about that later. Um but yeah. Um with me um, I had watched Love, Simon when it first came out, um, and I was going to watch it right away in theaters regardless because, one, it was a coming-of-age teen movie, and two, it was a Greg Berlanti movie, and y'all know me in the Arrowverse. Uh, despite Greg apparently being a big influence on one of the dumbest decisions I've ever heard, uh, you know, this was way before that. Um, and I was like, oh, cool. And Keenan Lonsdale is in it. Oh, I got to watch it. And, you know, love that movie. Like I said, for me, it's an instant classic. It's right up there with the likes of, like, a Mean Girls. Indeed. Or I gotta, you, you, you know, something like that. And uh, it's, just, it's just fantastic, man. Um, I went into Love, Victor. I knew I was going to be happy about it because, first off, like, the main character is a brown boy with thick eyebrows, and as a brown boy with big, thick eyebrows, I was like, all right, all right, I'm with you. I'm already with you. And, um, so, and yeah, with Love, Victor, his best friend is a nerdy white kid. So, uh, <laughs> no, you know, I, I didn't even think about that, but no, that's fa- that's accurate. That's that's facts, big facts. Um, yeah, no, uh, but for real, I I um I really really love this show. Um, I I find it so hilarious. So uh, we did an episode a while back that actually did pretty well on um the first half of One Day at a Time season three, no four, season four. It was four is the latest one. Um. And, you know, in the first two seasons of that show, um, um, Penelope has an ex-husband whose name happens to be Victor, who also happens to be more than a little homophobic at first. And it is played by the same actor who plays Victor's father. What a crazy coincidence. Yeah. That is that's just hilarious to me. Um but yeah, no, I was I was really into it. Um I I liked it a lot. Uh a lot, I've seen there were a lot of actors in it that I like I was surprised were in it. Like I uh you know, I've seen before like um what is what is her who who who's his like um beard the the really nice rich girl. I don't remember her character's name. I literally just kept calling her Young Beth because she Mia. was Young Beth in This Is Us. Mia. Yeah. I, the actress who plays Mia played Young Beth on This Is Us uh, this previous season. Oh, wow. And um, uh, Yeah. To me, I thought that she, she looked like uh, 
She looked like uh, Maya from Once Upon a Time. I could see that. But yeah, no, um, like in last season of This Is Us, like they have, uh, they have flashbacks to uh, Randall and Beth's college years when they first met. And uh, that is young Beth. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. that's pretty cool. And her dad is John Jones from Justice League. Uh, oh, yeah, I heard about that. Yep. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Um. Anyway, so like, I already knew she was gonna be great, and then I like, it turns out she was uh, she's like the super popular girl, but she's actually really nice. Like, oh my god, I love when they do that squirt. Um. Also, like, as soon as I met Lake, I was like, oh, I know what you're gonna be. I'm here for it. Uh. Like, because, you know, like, it's predictable, but, and I'm, I'm, I'm an easy mark, okay? If you, if you can, if you can check certain boxes for me with these types of shows, I will be happy. Um, and this show definitely checked a good amount of those boxes. Um, I enjoyed it a lot. I feel like anyone who is a fan of our podcast, and uh, we seem to have a pretty good, a pretty decent listenership, and in fact, an international listenership at that so that's pretty interesting um so honestly if you like most of the stuff if not all of the stuff that you know we talk about on a regular basis on here you will love this show like without a doubt uh it's n- it's nothing groundbreaking but it's nice wholesome very feel good tv and honestly with things how they are like i feel like more feel good tv is definitely needed Indeed. Um, so I feel like that's sufficient enough to go into spoilers. What would you What do you say, Brian? Do you have anything more to add, or uh, do you think well, we can just, uh, transition into it, full talk? We We got to see like his like instant best friend Felix, who was like like self imposed best friend, but mm-hmm. still really liked it. Also. Uh, Something that even even uh, Love Simon didn't really do is uh, we got into like his sister, Pilar. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I thought also, that was really cool. Some, also, something that I I really appreciate, and I think it was really cool. And I, you yeah. know, you couldn't really do this in a movie because a movie is literally, you know, you have the restraints of like being two hours tops. Uh, but what I really liked about this is that like. This, this entire show about his journey of discovering who he is and his sexuality and all that, he never actually says the word gay out a good chunk of the show because he's still trying to process how he feels. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's very accurate to the journey. You know, again, like I said, I've never gone through it myself, uh, but I have plenty of friends who have, and, you know, I, you know, I talk to them and I ask, so is this similar to how you were feeling? It's like, oh yeah, definitely, for sure. Like, obviously, it's different for everyone, but it's, you know, the same basic outline. Yeah. So I, I, oh. I, I, I really appreciated that. Like, it wasn't like super slow, and obviously there were times where I was yelling at my TV, just tell them. But like, you know, um, it's, 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 it was still pretty solid. Also, say, um, Ryan? Just two of the things that we can say that aren't spoilery is uh, one, I won't say like what role they play, but um, it continues the, uh, the tradition that Love, Simon put in place, which is uh, random people from 13 Reasons Why showing up. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That was and, weird. And also, um, another thing that I can say is... Uh, Which is kind of ironic because our last episode was on 13. Yep. And another thing that we can say is uh, the adult actors, a lot of them are familiar faces. Mm-hmm. Which was surprising. Like, yep. uh, we already mentioned 
Victor's dad, who was also in Jessica Jones. Yep. I was also very happy that Natasha Rothwell came back uh, as a, uh, but she got upgraded from drama teacher. It was really cool. Um, she's busy yeah. with Insecure, so I was glad to see her. And and we got a new teacher, the sex ed teacher, played by the yep. great Ali Wong. Which was fantastic. Oh my god. And she like she kept like filling them in about her personal love life and relationship drama. Oh my god. I wanted more of her. Like Yeah. And she was um, fighting over a set of DVDs. Oh, that was so great. And then um And then the uh I forgot what he's from now, but the the basketball coach slash gym teacher. He was oh yeah, cool. I did recognize him. I did recognize him. He was cool. which also you talk about swerving expectations, making our lead character like an actual athlete. I mean, yeah. I mean, it it, it kind of sucks that you know that is swerving expectations. But yeah, no, I really I really dig that because. It it eschews that stereotype of every gay person, especially every gay man, is a flimsy, flamboyant theater aficionado. Which, which Love, Simon, also helped to swerve. Yeah. But... Because despite the actor actually being able to, Simon himself can't sing for shit. Yeah. Or dance. But... But yeah, um, and then on Love Victor, uh, uh, to talk about her would be spoiling, but there is an actress appearing is someone from One Tree Hill. Oh, yep, yep. Um, and then, uh, surprise, surprise, playing me as dad is a very, like, Always there, I think, kind of underrated actor, Mackay Pfeiffer. Um, yeah, oh, that was him. Holy shit, I didn't even realize stuff that. Stuff like uh, ER, Eight Mile. Wow. To, uh, more recently, the Divergent movies. Uh, he was also in Torchwood for a while. Holland's crazy. I didn't even realize that was him. That just that just blew my mind. Um, but all right, I feel like twenty minutes in, we can get into spoilers. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, so uh, this is alert. the only yeah yeah. So this is the point of the podcast where uh, you need to just go ahead and watch the show if you do not want to be spoiled. Okay, so I want to start off with this. Holy shit, man! The the per- the parental drama mm-hmm. that was. That, I needed some milk because that shit was spicy. Indeed. Oh my goodness. Oh my god. Honestly, like me and my cousin, as we were watching it, we were like, okay, I, I kind of don't even care about Victor right now. I want to go back to the parents. I need to know more about this. Well, Wait, especially because uh, they left you kind of a little bit um, cliff hangry for a while because it's revealed yeah, what happened to the mom uh, yeah, yeah. and then the mom says, yeah, but they don't know what you did, and you're like, I, I yeah, and he was like, I, pre- I appreciate, uh, I appreciate, uh, you know, you not making me, uh, uh, you taking what the hit for me, and it's like, well, you know, we don't need both of us to be the bad guy. I was like, wait a minute, did you also, did you also cheat? What are you doing? Like, did you what cheat in retaliation? What happened? That's what I was thinking. Yeah, because I was like, they did have to move, and I mean, her having an affair with the boss does meet the criteria, but, like, they could have just moved to another city in Texas. And then it's just like, oh. Oh. Okay. All right, then. Uh, You beat the shit out of the boss. Yep. But Um, can we just, side note, say how scummy the boss is? 
Right? To be, like, messaging her on Facebook, and then, like, Brick come in there with, a, like, a bouquet of flowers? Like, fam, what? Yep. Yo, if it wasn't for Pilar, like, taking advantage of her mom's, like, boomer Facebook ineptitude. Well, well, that's the thing, though, is that the mom asked her to do it. She was paying her. No, no, but but also, like, she took advantage of the fact that she didn't know how Facebook works. So she told, she lied to her and said, oh, yeah, your Facebook got hacked. So that's why the password changed. Instead of, like, you know. You know I don't I mean? think that happened. That's what she said. Oh. Right? Like, that. that's why she doesn't know about, she didn't know about the messages. Because Pilar intercepted them. And change the password so she didn't see the messages. That's how they were able to, like, go to the hotel and find Homeboy. Well, she was already working on it when he messaged her. Because, because that's, that's the what, mom paid her to do it. No, the mom, the mom paid her to set up a Facebook. Because she wanted to talk to, uh, keep in touch with friends on tech. Uh, in Texas, and, and while then, she was setting it homeboy, up, he yeah texted. yeah yeah homeboy yeah homeboy started messaging her, uh, friended her, and then started messaging her, and then, but but before the mom could see the messages, Pilar changed the password and she lied to her mom and said, "Oh yeah, your Facebook got hacked, so um, I had it deleted, um, so don't worry about it. I'll make you another one." Oh, I must have missed that. Yeah, that well, well, that's what happened. But and then, anyway, you know, but yeah, man, that's spicy, especially because like you know, Victor is uh, you know, as most you know, I'm and this is just confirming a stereotype, but as most like you know, <laughs> eldest of the family, Hispanic boys are. Victor is a hardcore mama's boy, and so he was on mom's side the whole time. And he's like, Nah, mom didn't do this. Mom, mom couldn't have done that. No way, mom said. Mom couldn't watch. Mom couldn't keep watching Jimmy Kimmel because she said she was having impure thoughts. There's no when way. When he lost the weight, and yep, and then and then, <laughs> oh man! But like, uh, but then like they go to the hotel and then they see the dude, um, and, and at first they confront some old guy and just like, what the hell are you doing? And then just like, who's Teresa? And just like. Is that who you're on the phone with? And he goes, no, that's Siri. I told you, I'm not on the phone with anyone. She is my phone. That was funny. But Yeah, but then, but then you know, that, that joke was undercut because they turn around and they and, see Homeboy with and Simon, flowers. Yeah, and, and I almost said Simon. Victor's like, I know that guy. I've met him at dad's, you know, work parties and stuff. That's dad's old boss. And even Pilar's like, and no, that's like, not his old boss. So-and-so. And he's like, no, that's dad's boss's boss. Mm-hmm. Yep. And it's just like, shit. oh, shit. <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, but, man, like, that was really good. Um, I also, we don't get to dive fully into Mia, but Mia has her own fucked up baggage. Which, that's, that's, Uh, that's where One Tree Hill Girl comes in, because, yep, 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 uh, she was also, uh, she's also, um, uh, I think her most recent, like, big recurring role, she's in one of the Chicago's, Uh, one of the Chicago's, I want to say it's PD, it might be PD. Sophia Bush is her name. I know that. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is Sophia Bush. She's in Chicago PD. Yeah, I know it's Sophia uh, Bush. Yeah, because I, I loved One Tree Hill. She was in Med. Wait, no, she was in all of them, oh. technically. But yeah, she was, She did start in PD. Yep. Mm-hmm. But, uh, oh yeah, that's right, because there was an infamous thing about her leaving it. Yep, yep, yep. And uh, she was just recently on an episode of This Is Us. Yeah, as as Kevin's uh, as like uh, uh, Kevin's uh, potential love interest, uh, and uh, whole, there was a whole thing with John Legend. It was I man, I really love Sophia Bush. I've always loved Sophia Bush. I'm a big One Tree Hill fan. Well, she's got a um, new show coming up. 
2 called Good yep. Sam. Don't know anything about it, but anyway. But yeah, so, uh, um, you know, she has some, Mia has some baggage with her mom. I guess this is uh, kind of us transferring over to Mia. And, like, apparently her mom was an addict and, like, walked out on them. Mm-hmm. And, uh, well, you know. Well, no. Um, she said the ad- the addict part was a lie. Oh, the addict part was a lie? Yeah. She just, oh, she just walked out? Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I see that. I missed. Okay, cool, cool. But, yeah. Yeah, so, she told she um, told Victor that, mm-hmm. and she and the reason why she said the addict part was to make it less messy. How does the addict part make it less messy? And and I think she also said something about like her not being an addict made her feel like it was her fault. Uh, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Uh, but yeah, so um. Sophia Bush comes in uh, because, you know, we find out that the dad's kind of been like a serial dater. Um, he picks up a lot of girls, but none of them are, ever really stay around. A lot of However, them are not too much older than Mia. <laughs> yep. However, this one is, you know, job secure, you know, articulate, very, very Age nice. appropriate. And it's fucking Sophia Bush. Like... Like, come on. Um, and, you know, a bombshell is dropped that, you know, she is pregnant. So, and then even if they don't get, even if they don't get married, she's oh, going to be sticking around regardless. Ooh. Well, that was the thing, though, it is because that was the night that Simon was going to reveal to her. But then not only did they, did Mia put it together that she was pregnant. When she did, the dad went and told her, oh, yeah, and we're also getting married. Oh, 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 oh yeah, that was dropped. Damn. That's, poor Mia. Poor Mia. And Simon was um, going to tell her, but then he was like, oh, shit, I can't really yeah. tell her now. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to, I'm not going to pile on to this shit, can, uh, this shit cake of a night. But, um, but. Uh, we can talk more about this later, but it leads to it being even worse for Mia. Yeah, no, the the, the shit hit the fan like at like two hundred miles an hour. Um, so um, before we get to like more of Simon's family, let's talk about more side characters. So um, Andrew, let's talk about Andrew because I, I, you know, this this was different. This was a little different. I thought he was just going to be the asshole guy. I really thought he was just going to be the asshole guy the whole time. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but he actually kind of, he re, he he's not the asshole guy on purpose. He's the asshole guy um, who honestly thinks he's a good person and no one corrects him because they're kind of afraid of being his next victim. Y- yeah, but... Uh, which, by the way, I did love it when Felix stood up to him and he's like, "Oh my God, yo, yo!" Whenever, let me tell you, and this isn't just be, this isn't exclusively just because of the Breakfast Club. Anytime a teen show has a Saturday detention episode, I'm just like, "Okay, okay, you guys are doing this right." Yeah, but I love it where he's where he stands up to him and he literally calls him a ninety, <laughs> a nineties bully. Yep. <laughs> yep. No, he says. Hey, no, he said '80s bully. He goes you, something straight. He literally says something straight out of a John Hughes movie. <laughs> That's funny, but but yeah. Yep. Um. Yep. And then like he earns he earns so uh, Felix earns so much of his respect that he tags you know he tags the bathroom again, but this time he says Felix has big uh you know massive balls. Plural. And he literally writes plural. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, and so he he does grow on me, but but uh, but um, I don't know if I still root for him and Mia. I don't see no. But he, okay, so here's my thing. I'm not saying I like him. I'm just saying I didn't expect to like him at all. Yeah, I I get you. Yeah, 
I, like that was my thing. I thought I thought he was just gonna be the permanent asshole, like obstacle dude. But he turned out to have more to him than that. So I, I appreciate it. And I kind of thought that uh, they were gonna end up saying uh, him and Lake to begin with. Nope. Ah, no, 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 Brian. This is this is where your inexperience shows. I I sensed right from the beginning. As soon as it was like, yeah, I've been crushing on Lake since like kindergarten, and you know, Lake Ooh. having this unrequited crush for Andrew. I was like, oh, I know where this is going. Well, well, yeah, because uh, I what I thought. I thought they were going to go a different um, trophy route, which is I thought that uh, Mia's secret was going to push her and Lake away from each other. And they were going to go that route. I mean, her secret wasn't even bad. <laughs> uh, dude, her secret was that she... She lost her V-card to her best friend's crush. That's not that bad. I mean, no, I mean, <laughs> no, for, no, what, you're laughing, but it's not. Like, even Lake was like, you could have just told me. Well, that was like, after Lake she, had been with. I'm, but also, like, you know, Andrew, it wasn't, and I don't, and. Like, the way they imply it, Andrew wasn't the same fit situation as Felix, where, like, Felix has been crushing on her since kindergarten. Lake seemed, at the at that point in time, at least, was, like, the flighty, I just have a crush on a hot guy every couple of weeks. Andrew was just the latest guy. So, I, it wasn't a big deal. I mean, that's I'm, what I mean. It, it instantly changed, but I was just saying at the beginning, that's where I thought they were going to go. I was like, why are you laughing? <laughs> because, of it's course, that, you say that, that it's not that big a deal. But it wasn't, because, like, it, it's like Lake didn't have, like, a deep love for Andrew or anything. She just, this was like a little high school-ass crush. What Felix was feeling for Lake was, like, deep, actual feelings. Um... Like, if she was feeling that way about Andrew, then yeah, it would have been horrible. But yeah, anyway, Andrew, Andrew, they didn't go exactly where I thought with him, but I still don't ship him and Mia. Honestly, I just, I just want Mia to be happy in general. Yeah. Um, because she deserves it. I she mean, does. especially with all the shit she's going through. Um, but yeah, I guess that's a nice transition to go to Lake, who honestly is my favorite character of this whole show, because it's my favorite archetype in all of Teen Showdom. Um, bitch with a heart of gold. Absolutely love this trope. I don't care how many times it's used. As long as it's done correctly, I will love it, and Lake is no exception to the rule. Uh, she was a and- lot quicker than... Some others that we've seen. Oh, th- because look, that's the thing. If I can detect it instantly, that means I know it's going to be a quick turnaround. Oh, um, not always. I didn't <laughs> detect it instantly with. I didn't. Who, who are you? Who are you about to call out? Because I did not detect it instantly with Lizzie. Uh, you. You were hoping I, for it because of Caroline. I was hoping for it, but none of it was detected. Hoping and feeling it are two different things. I instantly felt it with Lake as soon as she showed up. I was like, yep, you're the one. I felt it in my bones. But anyway. And to, to quote Ryan Reynolds, I could feel it in my jellies. I could feel it in my jellies. I do, I do like Lake, though, in her story. And Also, like, I... It's it's just it's just really cool because like you know again this is a trope that's always been done before because but I like how it was handled where like obviously like is the super pretty super popular like IG girl type of you know character but then you find out like that her mom is the the hot anchor chick on the local news and so. 
she kind of has to constantly live up to expectations. And then we have the episode her mom is where past. Uh, uh, oh yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say. Then we have the episode where we actually get to meet the mom, and yeah, her mom. Her, yeah, her mom is like passive aggressively, emotionally abusive. Mm-hmm. You know who her mom really reminded me of? Who? Uh, Trish's mom on Jessica Jones. I could see that. I could see that. Honestly, I was thinking kind of like uh, Reese Witherspoon on uh, Little Fires Everywhere. Oh, that I can Without see the too. racist part. Well, actually, I don't know if, if without the racist part, but like, as far as I know, without the racist part. Um... But yeah, no, uh, Lake is really good. I, I really loved Lake. Um, especially when, like, her and Felix start having their little adventure with the cake first. And then, you know, like, they become makeout buddies. And I love Felix. <laughs> I, love, I love that moment with Felix. So they start making out. They pause. And she goes, wait a minute. How'd you get so good at this? His instant answer, YouTube. <laughs> yep. I, this kid. This kid. Oh, but- man. But yeah, they also, um, you notice, they also, they only did it once with the lake, but they did the Hulu go-to thing. Yep. No, they did it like twice, twice with lake. The lift. Yep. Yep. (laughs) That permanent lift sponsorship. Yep. (sighs) It's not, it's not Runaways level, but. It's there. Yeah, it's like I'm waiting for my lift. <laughs> Who says it like that? But right. But yeah. But she was really cool, and uh, her. I, at the, I liked at her the a lot. The spring dance was very funny, where she was trying to act normal. No, I, I... And her friendship with um with Mia is so earnest and real. Like they are actual friends, and I and I love that. Also, she tries to stick up for Sophia Bush, mm-hmm. and she's like, "Dude, no, I actually I actually like her. I mean, I've met a lot. I've met your dad's other girlfriends. Like, she's actually kind of cool, man. And I I love I love the moment when um out of anger, um Mia tosses the really nice uh, clutch in the purse uh, in the trash. And Lake instantly just grabs it out of there, kisses it, and says, "Your mommy's crazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Don't worry about her." Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I, I, I thought that was great. Uh, that was absolutely just precious. Uh, it was. Lake and Lake. Lake has a smile that deserves to be protected. That sweet moment um, at the end. Oh man! Like the yeah, the prom king and queen moment. That was all. Oh, I, I loved that. That was and, great. Uh, going on to, like, I guess transitioning to Felix real quick. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, love, I love it at that yeah. scene where, where somebody's like, oh, one stone. And he just like, like, yep. puts a finger and, like, thumbs up. <laughs> yep. If there is a, if there's a uh, like, if I had to choose a second favorite character on the show, it would definitely be Felix. Like, Lake and Felix, top tier, just easy. Yeah, and because and I do love oh, him with the oh one, my him with the one stone thing, where he's like, yeah, they called me one stone, and uh, it it did start Lone off stone. Lone Lone. Stone, and it did start off as mo- mocking, but I reclaimed it. <laughs> yep. No, that was great. Um, also, I I just love how eager this kid is. He's just adorable, man. Mm-hmm. Like, um, he's like, I thought you said we we're gonna, you're gonna, you know, we're gonna, you're gonna meet, uh, meet me at my, uh, my place at seven. Why are you here at six forty-five? He goes, actually, I was here at six forty. I spent five minutes outside your door waiting before I. I couldn't knocked. remember if we said seven or seven thirty. So he showed it. He goes, dude. It's. He goes, dude. It's six forty-five. He's like, I've actually I've been here since six forty. <laughs> oh man, he, he's just he's great. And, and then I I loved I, I loved the moment uh when he's at the winter carnival and he's like he's carrying all the all like the popcorn and the nachos in like both hands. Cause he like knows that this is Felix's first 
Yeah, Nick, yep. he and knows he, that this you know, is Victor's ne- first carnival. And and he's like, you know, and the, the sounds sad, and it is kind of sad, but he's never had a friend, and you know, I feel, um, Victor is someone who is completely unaware of the whole Lone Stone thing, so he could actually make a, de- a good friend out of him. So, like, he instantly kind of just clings to him. Mm-hmm. And at first, it's, it's annoying at first, for sure, but it's annoying in an endearing way. You know? Yeah, you know, you know who he kind of reminded me of, a little bit. Who? Uh, Max from Wizards of Waverly Place. Mm, I feel like Max is way dumber. True. Like, way, way dumber. Like, but I can kind of see it, especially visually. Oh. You know, you know who my cousin said he looked like, and I couldn't get it out of my head. Uh, he kind of looks like Sean Mendez, except um, like kind of slightly different facial structure. Also, you know the one thing that bothered me the entire time, and this is just a random, just small tangent nit- nitpick about Felix. There's one piece of his hair <laughs> that sticks out and is out of place, and he does it on purpose. And I'm just like, dude. Brush that down. <laughs> that annoyed the hell out of me every time he was on screen. I wanted, like, I literally wanted to do the mom thing and be like, "Got to get fix this." But, but back to him as a character, though. I also like. Yeah, I also uh, like how uh, yeah he is. They re- they reveal a lot of depth to him. Um. You know, you think he's just kind of the the standard comic relief character, and obviously he has the big character development moment with, of course, um, Andrew. But then, you know, he has that big moment with Lake, where we find out more about his family life, and damn, dude, it's never said explicitly, or at least maybe I didn't hear it, but... It's heavily implied that his mother killed herself. Huh. I didn't get that. I know that. She... Okay. So, so when they went into the room, when they went into the room with all the books and stuff, the old apartment, or the, the room of that of his apartment, he mentioned my mother had depression. She constantly fought it, but on the days when she was good, you know, we would just sit around, collect these books, and read. But. You know, and but now it's just kind of a like a, a museum, and I haven't changed it around at all because. Well, and then he just stops talking. Damn! If that's true, shit. Um, that's what I'm saying. Also, holy shit! Felix's dad never seen or mentioned. Nope. Nope. I, 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 th- I think, like, he might be living with grandparents or something. I don't know what's going on with him, not to be honest with you. But seriously, I th- I'm, I'm, like, 90% sure his mother killed him se- herself. Wow. But, um, which, damn. Yeah. Cause, and, it, and, it, and it's on brand, because it seems like every main character has some kind of mommy issue. Crap, you're right. Um. Mm-hmm. Except for Andrew. But we but don't Andrew's really know character. his parents. But so That's true. That's true. He could. <laughs> There's still times. Yeah. But um yeah, with Felix well, though, I do like his like personality just in general though. Like uh he... Well of course you would. <laughs> it's basic <laughs> <laughs> But but I just meant that I like the whole like thing about like kind of how he has like little hipster elements like he likes using the radio the walkie talkie mm-hmm. which, which oh yeah I, I really enjoyed that like when uh, Victor apologized he goes uh, how does this work um, Felix to Victor um, over <laughs> mm-hmm. or yeah, that that was great. I love that. And Victor um, came back from his vacation and, and all that. And I and I, I, I love that he's like, 
I love that he's like, uh, you know, Victor's like, dude, do you not have a cell phone? He goes, where's your sense of whimsy? Mm-hmm. That was great. And Ooh, I also appreciate shit. that Felix was the first, what? They never confirmed this, but what if, what if Felix is like unintentionally living by himself? Oh, yeah. Like, because what if he can't afford a cell phone? Oh, man. I mean, no, we see him with a phone. No, we see him with oh, a phone. Oh, we do? Okay. But yeah, we, anyway, yeah, we see him with a phone. It, it was he's still just... cool. Oh, but, but, but on that topic, you just made me think of something. Because, uh, I mean, I, this is just, again, this is speculation. We, you know, we could talk about this, I guess, more in our, like, possible season two stuff. Uh, but, um... Just kind of inferring here, right? We don't ever see or hear about Felix's dad. However, we see Felix at a party, and he gets pretty fucking toasted. Mm-hmm. Now, granted, part of that and, was um, working him on. But, but, that shit is hereditary. Yes. Or at least it, it notably can be. Yes, it can. But but I like the whole like apology and all that via walkie talkie mm. and Yeah, and I really do appreciate that um Felix is the first person Victor tells. Yes. And I also love how Felix <laughs> unintentionally just complicates everything. But because <laughs> he's like what trip? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, no, it was like um, P. P. Lawler. It's like it was a work trip. It, it was a work thing, and it's complicated. So just let him figure it out. He goes. He yeah yeah. He goes. Don't don't worry about it. He'll tell you when he's ready to tell you. Um, it's 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 not a big deal. Trust me, you'll understand. <laughs> and you know, Pilar has had enough because so many so many people in her family and I guess it's a good transition to talk about Pilar. Well so many people in her family have fucking lied to her. Um so like she's very distrustful. And also her boyfriend, you know, who was long distance, um, broke up with her. Mm-hmm. Because he so used to live She in feels Texas. alone. Well, she used to live in Texas yep. and he lives there still. And he's a teenage boy. Yep. Which, yeah, honestly, like you know, I know they make they make you want to have her want to uh, like make us want you to like make him feel like an asshole. But honestly, at least he broke up with her. Like, and at least he broke up with her before things got really. Yeah, yeah. Like he could have cheated and then broke up with but her, and that would have been like, um, oh, what? We do find out that there, she was about to try to do something to keep him to stay. <laughs> And... Although, okay, okay, let me let me talk let me talk about that particular moment because like I love this, um, because of how Sophia Bush handles uh, it. Oh my Sophia god, Sophia Bush. Yeah, or not Sophia Bush, not Sophia. My bad. Uh, da, da, da. the mom. Uh, my bad. I mean Victor's mom, not Sophia Bush's. Mia's stepmom. Yeah. Yes. I mean like uh, yeah. I, how Mrs. Alvarez handles it. Cause holy shit, this she was a champ here. Cause um, cause she was like, you know what? No, you're you're a young woman now, and you know I'm just gonna trust that you can make the right decisions. She goes, oh, and by the way, your body is developing beautifully. And you get that from me, you know. I'm just like, oh my god, yes, this is how you do it. This is exactly how you do it. Cassie's if Cassie's mom from Euphoria had done this, none of that would have happened. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, I, I really, I really appreciate that moment. Um, Pilar's a really good character. Uh, and, you know, her only support was her big brother. And then when she found out he's been lying and he could have possibly been cheating on, like, the, his, her only other friend that she had. That she, you know, has grown really attached to and, you know, has really started to like a lot. Yeah. Also, uh, this is definitely a very... Okay, so, yeah, so, so this is... I have some speculation, and again, I know this. we used to save this towards the end, but 
I want to know. I want to. I want to do a quick vibe check. I want to know if you were kind of getting the same energy I was, but I had this kind of in the back of my mind feeling that maybe, just maybe, Pilar might more than like Mia. Hmm. I did not. I just, it's just, I... It, it was never like. It was never like a, oh, that's obvious. It was just, just kind of in the back of my mind. Especially because, just, I mean, obviously she was hurt because she, you know, cares about Mia. But also, like, she was able to open up to Mia. Mia is someone that she can talk to. Huh. And, like, you know what I mean? And in a lot of the, like, in a lot of the, like, you know, stuff that I watch, uh, that's very, like, that deals with these kind of things, like, those people that like especially girls at this you know at this stage of their life open up to are the t- tend to be kind of the ones that they gravitate towards so i was like maybe maybe and i kind of just pushed it aside but i wanted to know like if uh if you think that could be a possibility because like i'm definitely feeling- maybe um maybe this is just my heteronormative uh like like, set mindset, but I almost thought that maybe they were going to go the route that uh, she was starting to crush on Felix. Oh, hell no. She was definitely not into Felix. I got no spark from them. Well, they definitely, like, had coffee together, remember? I mean, I have coffee with several people. And uh, she kind of admitted that she liked it. I mean, she just needs she she was in desperate need of friends. Um, but I, I definitely didn't feel anything between her and Felix. Hmm. Cause, Cause like they didn't have any they didn't have any significant interactions after that. Like if they did, then sh- maybe I could have seen more hmm. of that. But like that was the only time. Well, Mia and Pilar have had several like. I don't remember them having that for... much. When Victor and them first show up to school with the vending machine, she's the one who, you know... Yeah, but outside to, like, of that, I don't remember them. And... Oh. And then at the party... That was at when, true at the party, like, but... Anyway, Felix, um... Her and Felix only had the one time. <laughs> but... And then they had the time at the spring formal where she... But anyway, um, I'm not, I'm not sure, but, uh, yeah, Pilar, though, uh, she definitely was your typical teenage, like, rebel, but not like, um, criminal rebel. Yeah, no, she's just an, she's just an, she's just an emo kid. She's literally, she's just an yeah, emo kid. Um, she... if, this, if this, if this movie had come out in 2004 instead of 2020 instead of 2020 instead of listening to Billie Eilish she would have definitely been blasting the Black Parade yeah but I feel like um I or, did like Pilar I guess like um, 2006 oh yeah she, she was great she was great she, the whole thing with her mom and the getting the piercing mm-hmm yeah, that that was that was pretty awesome. Uh, my my, cu- my cousin called it too because she she I was like, all right, what's the extra thing? And I was like, please don't tell me it's. Uh, and she goes, she goes, no, she goes, it's a tongue piercing. I was like, oh thank God, oh thank God. This is who, this is Hulu. They wouldn't go there. Oh, who am I to know, man? Hulu Hulu has done some adult stuff. <laughs> What do you mean, man? Dude. <laughs> there I mean I mean I know it's not a teen show, but they've literally shown a woman getting her clitoris removed on the handmaid's tale. But like you said, the prefix so, to that sentence. Now if this was Netflix 
I don't, I don't know why you think Hulu is cleaner than Netflix. Well, Hulu's definitely showing stuff. some pretty risque. Mm, I don't know. I've, 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 I've seen, I've seen some pretty Netflix level stuff on Hulu. They're pretty even in terms of but like anyway. Um, Pilar was a cool character, and uh, it, it was nice that the sister actually got something to do because. That was one of the smaller things that um, maybe irked me just a little bit about Love, Simon was. I mean, but also, like, the reason they got to do that is because uh, Victor had a much smaller friend group, right? Like, Mm -hmm. and the the focus on, like, with Simon was more of, like, his friend group played a much bigger role. I mean, obviously his parents were big as well but like the friend group was more um, important mm. to him uh, his journey uh, but yeah no okay so um, before we jump to the Love Simon characters I want to quickly talk about Benji because Benji was a good character Benji was a good character I enjoyed him a lot uh, there were so many cute scenes with those two um Literally, they had something that almost reminded me of Ghost when they were making the, like... I mean, I had seen this in the trailer, but even but seeing it in full context was even cuter. When uh, he was teaching him how to make, like, the, the cappuccino that, or espressos or whatever. I'm sorry, I'm not a barista. Um, you know, the, the, the drinks. And, like, you know, they changed to the sexy music and... You know, a lot of heavy innuendos with the foam and stuff. You gotta steam the milk. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. No, it was, they were really cute. And, like, honestly, the moment when, uh, like, Victor kissed him on their work trip, I was like, it was one of the simultaneous, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Yeah, like, like, definitely... Like, kind of, kind of simultaneously feeling happy and mad. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Um, But yeah, he was a good character. I mean, we didn't get to see as much of him, so, like, I can't give as full of a, like, analysis as I could for, like, Felix or Lake or Mia, but... It was good for the screen time he got. Mm-hmm. I mean, I did like the whole thing about the the romantic stuff. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm. And I, I like that, uh, like, Victor encouraged him. I also loved that Victor stood up for um, Benji and his boyfriend when he showed up at the mm-hmm. party. And uh, his, uh, his abuelo was like, you know... Tell your friends they shouldn't be doing that here. Your little brother could see. Which, real quick, I re- I love the little brother, and I love that he has an Elsa wand, and he just waves around, and it's just like, "You're frozen. You're frozen. You're frozen." Like that was great. And of course, the dad is very iffy about that. Hmm. But yeah, no, I I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I mean, I, I really enjoyed Benji's. Yeah, I really enjoyed Benji's character. Um, yeah, for what it was. Um, also, so yeah, uh, now just let's talk about just real quick. Oh yeah, my bad. Benji related. I did like their boss at the. Oh the yeah, shop. Doc with the blog mom. Yeah. Yeah, that was great. I, I when I saw when I saw her, both me and my cousin were like, "Hey, it's the bomb from Dog with a Blog." Yeah, yeah, that was cool. I, I I dug her. Um, so yeah. Um, now let's transition to talking about the Love Simon characters. So I love what they did with um with this. So I'm glad it wasn't just you know they didn't just use the brand in name. You know, like a lot of these things tend to yeah. do. Yeah. And they didn't just use the schools, the same school set. No, Simon was involved in this. Like, of course, he wasn't there 
for 90% of it, but like he was there in spirit via these text messages because it literally starts off with Victor basically sending a Q Simon message. It's like Q and your perfect family and your support system and not everyone's going to be like you, Q Simon. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I love, and I love the evolution of their friendship, you know, as their like their back and forth continues. Yep, and oh, and mm-hmm. like at the end, uh, well, I also like it when they're like talking though, and he's like, "I can't be there," which was funny, and he was like, yep. "I have to be at my cousin th- thing." And it's like cousin boobs, bachelor party. Boobs. Yay, boobs! Yay, boobs! Yep, and no, and. That yeah, that was all, uh, like I I love that because like in my head I was like, Victor, what do you expect, man? You can't just spring it on somebody. And Simon's literally like, "What the fuck, dude? <laughs> I wish you had told yeah, me." Yeah, he's like, "I can't um, be your gay sherpa that you want, but but I know a certain speedster who can." And and I was like, "Yay, Wally!" Yep. Yeah. Good to see Bram. Good to see Bram. Yeah. Loved it. And loved it. Here's where you get another thirteen reasons why alumni with their roommate. Yep, Ryan. Yeah, Ryan from Thirteen Reasons Why. Um, we- yo, and they legit like tor- during Simon's like New York, ad- not Simon's Victor's New York adventure. Like, they legit stole, like, scenes straight out of Katie Keene. I was like, am I watching a Katie Keene episode right now? Yeah, and I thought it was really cool, though, because um, they featured in that, like, scene and all that, they featured, mm-hmm. like, real-life drag queens. And uh, when they went to go play basketball, that was actually a real-life athlete. Oh, yeah. He was the fir- he was the first openly out um, NBA yep. player, and it was actually him. Like, oh yeah, no, <laughs> like in the show, which was really cool. Yeah, um, basketball is like the only sport I follow. Because I like it though. Because uh, Graham's like, I noticed that kind of was overwhelming you and not really your thing. So uh, basketball. Yep. He's like, that yeah, was cool. they're all gay. It's an all gay league. Yeah, that was that was dope. And again, I love that like Bram was basically like, yeah, there's no one type of gay dude. Like, you don't have to be a a, a flamboyant like cabaret singing theater major. But also, you can be an athlete. I also like it how even though with that kind of flamboyancy, they still like humanized it, like. I don't even remember his character's name, but Ryan mm-hmm. was um, talking to Victor and like three years ago, this was me and showed a picture of him as a, they didn't really Mormon, right? They didn't I want say it. it. They didn't say, but it, but it looked like it, right? Like it I was, thought it was, it was um, the um, Jehovah's yeah. Witness. That's what I was, I was thinking, because he said but... they went door to door. Mormons also go door to door. But anyway, uh, so it shows him like in the typical like Mormon. Excuse me, ma'am. Do you have a moment? <laughs> yeah. Excuse me, ma'am. Do you have a moment of your day to, uh, to you know hear the good word of the Lord Jesus Christ, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? But but yeah, uh... and, that's, and he was like. That was the drag. That was the costume. This is me. Yeah, which is very much, again, going back to Katie Keene, which I still need to watch that finale, damn it. I haven't seen that Same. finale. Um, and we wonder why it's on the bubble. But... <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, it's so, it's uh, apparent, uh, like I said, uh, I, I mean, I told you this off mic, but anyone who's interested, I'll just say this real quick. Um, it's, it's like, it got shadow renewed because, like, 14 new scripts were ordered. So, like, they wouldn't order scripts if the show was canceled. So, pretty sure it's renewed. 
But anyway, back to Love, Victor. That but, yeah. New York... Mm-hmm. That New York excursion was pretty cool, and I liked it, and I liked how it ended, yeah. too. Yeah, and yeah, the, the the cutest moment of all of that was when uh, when um, you know the drag queen brought Victor on stage, and he goes, "She," uh, and Victor is all nervous, and he goes like, um, uh, uh, "And then you know the drag queen, she uh, she looks at him and she goes, well, Victor, you know, uh, how'd you let, um, how's your night?'" And he's like, "This was the best night of my entire life," and I was like, "Oh, you go, man!" Indeed, um... that, that was that was great. All right, and so we've been beating around the thing bush. About the New York excursion, though, real quick. Okay. Mm-hmm. Is that mm-hmm. it ends with with not only getting the talk from actual real Simon, but he gives him his jacket. A literal passing. Of, yeah, I was gonna say it's a literal passing of the torch, but it's a passing of the jacket, it which is great. the infamous jacket from all the posters. From. Yep, and also. Um, uh, I we didn't talk about this earlier, and I wish I had brought it up when I was talking about Mia. But I love that they swerved you right in the beginning, uh, where he goes on the Ferris wheel with Mia. And I was talking with Elizabeth about this a long time ago. But we noticed a weird pattern that, for some reason, on TV at least, gay people tend to fr- uh, like have their first kisses on Ferris wheels. Um, there are a lot of them. Hmm. Especially on teen shows, in particular. Degrassi had a bunch. A bunch. Um, but yeah, uh, it was just it's just a weird coincidence. Anyways, so, we've done enough beating around the bush. Uh, let's talk about the spring formal. And we got like 20 minutes full... left, so. Yep, and the ending. So, holy crap. Shit hit the fan real fast. Because Simon, Simon's like... Mia's had all of this stuff thrown against her with her family. I want to give her one nice final good night before I tell her I that tell I'm here. Tell her the truth. And and then like, you know, uh Andrew ends up finding out on accident because he's in the bathroom at the same time as Simon. Which I do like that um, swerve though, that He's like, I'm not gonna ruin Mia's night. Uh, he's like, I care about her happiness too. Mm-hmm. Also, there's there's being there's being a dick and then there's being a dick who outs someone who's not ready to be outed. Yeah. Which... Yeah, that, that, see, that that's the difference and being a dickhead. Like love, no one wants to be a dickhead. Simon. Spoilers for Love Simon, but that's what happens there. But Yeah. Which, also, now that I mention it, it is a good source that they didn't go that way because they would have been copying the movie. Kind of. Yeah, straight up. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but, but yeah, so eventually... Um, Pilar is there. And I, also, I don't know why mm-hmm. she's there, but she's there. And Yeah, she's, she's not even in there great. And, I, uh, I, thought, I, thought, I was wondering about that, too, because like, it's not like she went with Felix or anything. She just went. And uh, she's like investigating everyone, finds out from, from we already said it, finds out that it was a work thing. So she instantly goes to Benji, which uh, just Benji, real quick, he, we talked about this earlier with uh, last time with uh, Tony and his boyfriend. How old is Benji's mm-hmm. boyfriend? Benji's boyfriend. I have no idea how old Benji's boyfriend is. To be he honest was with you. a tall I, I, dude, and he yeah. was only there because Benji asked him to be there. Mm-hmm. So yeah, uh, yeah, that was yeah, that was, yeah, yeah. So that could be a creepy situation, but you know, luckily that's over with for now. At, yeah, I because so. once Pilar um, tells them, and this like starts poking around. Yep. Yeah, all it. Yeah, everything just all the dominoes start to fall into self-destruction mode. Mm -hmm. And um, I love that Victor, like, he tries his best because he's like, oh, I feel so bad now. And he's like, like, no, dude. Like, I kissed him and he stopped it. You don't have to worry about it. He cares about you. But then he also goes on to gush about Benji. Mm -hmm. Like, how great of a guy he is. 
Yep. And then, you know, Victor steps outside to get some air. And then Benji is like, you know, he comes out there. He goes, and Victor tries to apologize. He goes, don't worry about it. Honestly, I broke up with him. And then, you know, he talks about like how they've, they've been slowly drifting apart for a while now. And, you know, hearing you, like hearing you talk about how you felt, honestly, that's how I felt too. And um, so they, they kiss. It's a big like yay, but why moment, and then the yay, the yay, but why is compounded when freaking and like Andrew didn't do this on purpose. It's not like Andrew led him out there because he saw them walking. Said, Andrew wasn't even Andrew, there, dude. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it was just Mia. Mia walks out there, and she sees it happen, and it's just like, oh, he ran to Andrew. Oh. Yep, and it's just like, oh fuck. But- Cause um, in my head, I was like, "Cute, but think about me. Think about yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like y'all couldn't wait. Like, I mean, you could have just been like, like you could have confessed. What about me? You could have confessed your feelings. Yeah, exactly. You could have confessed your feelings and just been like, "All right, cool. Now let um, me l- talk about uh, yeah, and talk then, to me. And yeah, we can actually do yeah, this. yeah, yeah. Because it's just like, you know, once you confess your feelings, you could be like, "All right." Like, I just want you to know I do feel this way, but I need to explain this to Mia. She needs to understand. And then, you know, no secrets, no more lies. I will be fully out and with you. But nah, now I can wait like two hours. Teenagers, man. Y'all are just too damn horny. Uh man, good times. But anyway, so the but why happens and like it's compounded by like Pilar still thinking that you know he cheat yeah, he cheated on um you know Mia and she's like who's B? Who's B? And also Pilar, you're smart. Benji told you that no one works with them except for Chelsea, whose name starts with a C. Benji's name starts with a B. Come on, fam. You're a smart girl. You were able to deduce and discover your mom's secret affair. Come on, Pilar. Come on, I just man. think that she didn't think that was going to happen. Like, oh, I that know. wasn't even I mean, like I, I, a possibility no, no, in her head. No, look, no, I know that I understand the logic, but also, like, she's super smart. I get you, but, um, but yeah, so. Oh, so, like, so, yeah, so, you know, they, they, they come back all, ang- they come back, uh, Pilar's, you know, upset, but because he's like, look. He, he was like. He's like, I'll, I'll explain everything, everything, but can we go home first? Not do it yeah. here. Yeah, I'll, yeah. And then she's like, "Fine, okay, I trust you." And so it happens. And then, like, the mom starts. Then the parents start fighting. Well, the par- they come home going, and the parents, and he's like, "Okay, I'm going to tell all three of them at once." Then, and I want to tell you something. Mm-hmm. And then the parents are like. Well, uh, if you don't mind, we want to tell we, you something. Yeah, first. we'll tell you something. And then they drop a big bombshell. Uh, they tell the kids that they are, they're not divorcing yet. They're separating. Um, and then after that, like, you know, everybody starts to yell and bickering starts happening. And Victor cuts the crap. And he goes, oh, no, right, he, guys, he, look. he's like, OK, fine, I'm going to take a shower. And the mom says. What was it that you wanted to tell us? Yep, and, and then he says, and then he says "No, don't worry. Yeah, it's not, not, no, don't worry about it." And then, like he, as he's starting to walk up, he goes, "You know what? No, no. All right." And then he says it, and he actually says the word "gay" for the first time in the entire show. What? And that's the cliffhanger. Cut to black. And that's the cliffhanger. I was pissed. Yep. I was so pissed, and that was the cliffhanger. Like. That's how you end it, fam? Are you serious? I gotta wait a year for this? Possibly two? I don't know what the cycle is for production now the coronavirus is a thing. Crap. 
I shouldn't have said the C word. I forgot about the YouTube version. I apologize, Brian. It's fine. I'm just going to leave it because I think all that they do is demonetize it. And we don't monetize yeah, and things also, anyway. That's true. That's true. Okay. Cool. 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 Anyways. Um, so, yeah. Um, I was I was pissed. But honestly, still very solid. I already talked about most of my speculations in the middle of our discussion. So if you have anything you want to talk about in terms of possibilities for season two. Um, I think we could possibly maybe get some new characters, which that would be cool to see. And um, not hopefully not too many, though, because like I feel like we have a really good amount of cast. And I know, but know, I'm just saying and... that um, if don't like Mia with. With Michael. Andrew, sorry. Andrew. Andrew. If we don't like her with Andrew and uh, everyone else the is, thing doesn't is happen. gay or taken, we are going to need at least one person new. Yeah, if the Pilar person. thing doesn't happen. But, um, so yeah, but also, um, it doesn't have to be big, but you know who's one... One person that we really like, who is a 13 Reasons Why actor who hasn't appeared in the Simon verse yet. Who? Ross. Oh, man! Yo, Ross Butler, that's my dude. Ross Butler is awesome. He's in Shazam. He's in 13 Reasons Why. He, uh, I first saw him in Casey Undercover, so he's definitely in that like Disney family. He, he was... He was OG Reggie, but was too nice a guy. Which is funny, because they end up turning Reggie into a friend, like, in the later season, so, like, he could have just stayed around. But, also, but honestly, I'm kind of glad, I'm, yeah. 13 reasons why. And I'm kind of glad he's not involved with that dumpster fire, um, but, you know. Although, um, is Reggie really involved in that dumpster fire now? Big facts. Anyways, so yeah. Um, anything else? Um, I would like to see more. We got a hint of it, but I would like to see more of um, bonding of me and Sophia Bush. Yep, yep. That would be pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. Also, like we said, uh, if Felix does have a father, get to see him. I would like to see more Andrew care. Like, if, if we're gonna get more characters, they need to be characters attached to ones we already know. We don't need any brand new characters. Like Felix's dad, yes. Andrew's parents, yes. He he needs to have a mommy issue. You can't complete the set without him having a mommy issue. Uh, literally, everyone in the main cast has a mommy problem. Mm-hmm. Now he Even- could swerve it and have a daddy issue. Even oh yeah, even Victor's dad has a mommy problem because his mom is a bitch to um his wife, and uh, his For mom no has reason. a mommy problem because her mother-in-law is a bitch. That's what, exactly that's wow wow. And Pilar this show has should a be mommy issue. man. This show should be called Love Mommy Issues. <laughs> But uh, we got like Cause they love... 11 minutes left, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, that's pretty much it. We love the show. Uh, it's fantastic. No Highly pun recommend intended. it. Yeah, no pun intended, although slightly pun intended. Uh, but, yeah, fantastic show. Highly recommend it. Go watch it. Uh, so, we have now reached that special time of the night where we get to plug what is going on for our channels. For myself, it is Flair and Twitch. Um, for Brian, it is his YouTube channel. So, I mean, I feel like I already know the answer to this, Brian. But... Yeah, I, I need to have, like, a relaunch of my channel soon. And, like, just do, like, a complete, like, relaunch. But you know, yeah. either, either either that or just fully transfer. Like, I mean, um, again, up to you. It's a. I know, but it's just like I don't know the uh, visual way to do that whole uh, like shame, 
like symbol nowadays with the hand. Yep. I, I, honestly, I was just picturing the shame nun from Game of Thrones. Um, but Hopefully yeah. not okay. that bad. <laughs> but yeah, so Brian, Brian's uh, currently still inactive because, you know, he's Mana. adjusting to work life. Uh, so for me, um, I'm coming out with the Harley Quinn finale video probably tomorrow uh, at the very latest Monday. Uh, which, by the way, Harley Quinn is our next episode for season two. Mm-hmm. Um, so look forward to that. I'm going to do the Harley Quinn finale. I am probably going to do like a 30-minute rant video on the bullshit storytelling nightmare that was The Last of Us 2. Really? That bad? That bad, Brian. That bad. That bad. Oh, God. Because the first one is a masterpiece. Absolute masterpiece. I'm not going to even front. But anyways, so yeah, look forward to that. That's going to be fun to make. Um, probably going to make, I might even dabble in putting out some FGO videos. I'm going to be doing quite a few streams this week because FGO's third anniversary is coming up. So big events to talk about uh, here. Uh, thank you to everybody who's been supporting me over on Twitch. It's a brand new platform. I actually wasn't expecting any growth at all within my first two weeks. I've gotten 15 followers. And these aren't even people that knew me from an- another place. These are just brand new ass people. So thank you guys. Uh, but yeah, um, thank you guys to everyone who is listening, watching on YouTube. Uh, you guys have been great. Hopefully we'll catch you next week for our Harley Quinn episode. Uh, until next time, we love you all. And see you next week. Love, Jay and Brian. Later.